Good morning, boys and girls. Today is day five of Vacation Bible School. And every day this week, we have been learning about Jesus is our strong foundation. You've heard lessons every day this week about who Jesus was and why God sent him to us. And we've been hearing about all the things that God wants for us in our lives and how he is molding us constantly into the people that he created us to be. And so let's read this together and loud. Jesus is our strong foundation. Can you read it? Jesus, Jesus is our strong foundation. So all week you have been hearing Lessons on love, you know, it's kind of important, isn't it? I don't know about y'all, but sometimes I really need to know about God's love for me because you know what? Sometimes it helps me because there's some people that maybe we just don't necessarily like, but God tells us how to love one another. He also tells us the lessons that you've learned this week is about trust and obedience in your worth in Jesus Christ. He loves you so much that you were created in the very image of God. You know what that means? You were given all those wonderful characters of God. You know how to love and learn, how to make things. All of those were given to each one of us by God. And so when I look around here, boy, there's a lot of work going on, isn't there? Mm -hmm. A lot of heavy equipment. You know, builders know that it is very important to have a strong foundation when they're building a structure. And so that is what Jesus is our strong foundation. And so Jesus would tell stories. In fact, in God's word, he called them parables. Ever heard of that word, parable? Do you know what it means? Well, Jesus would use a parable, it would be an easy way to tell a story that was so important for us to know things that we would understand that were easy. And so Jesus has an important message for the people. He would teach on a hillside near the town of Galilee. That is where he did most of his teachings. And so right by Galilee was the Sea of Galilee. It was really a big lake. Before we start and I tell you about the story that Jesus told, I want to ask you, how many of you have built a sandcastle on the beach? Ten. So you found the right place, right? And boy, you would flatten it down, you'd make it nice and smooth, and then you'd get that sand and you you would build your sandcastle and wouldn't you pack that sand really tight, make sure it didn't crumble? Well, what happens when the waves come in? It knocks it down. It knocks it down, that's right, because it wasn't strong. So Jesus has a story that he wants the people to know about what God has for them, that Jesus is their rock. And so as he's sitting on this hillside, boy, any time the people heard that Jesus was coming to tell a story, I mean, they would run to that hillside to hear what he had to say. They had never heard anyone talk like Jesus did, spoke to their hearts. And while they're sitting on that hillside, Jesus knew that these people knew all about storms and about sand and about buildings. And so he used those things to tell them something they needed to know. 
So he starts out and he said, I want to tell you about there was a man who wanted to build a house. He wanted to build a strong house. He went and found the perfect location of where he wanted to build that house. It was up high on a high rocky ledge, kind of like this, and had a layer of dirt that he cleaned and, and washed away. And just look, this would be like the first level of earth, and this rock is really firm down in the ground. And as he went, he found this place, and he said, that is a good location for my house. So he gathered all his materials together, lugged them up, and walked up that high ledge, and built his house. You can see how firm this is. So soon enough, a storm came up. The rains began to fall. The wind started howling and pushing against that rain. And as that rain came down, <clears throat> puddles began to form. <gasps> it almost looked like it might flood his house, but it didn't. His house was high and dry because he had built it on a firm foundation. It withstood the storm. Well, now Jesus isn't through with his story. There was another man. Oh, I wanted to show you something. I almost forgot this picture. See here where the man is building his house and he's chiseling stone. Have y'all ever chiseled stone? No. No? It's very hard to do. And so this man made sure that his foundation was strong. And so he, he kind of cut a ledge out there on that rock and he would sit the walls of his house inside that foundation. So there was another man, he wanted to build a house too, and he wanted his house to be just as strong as this other man's house. Well, he too went and looked and he found the perfect location for his house. It was kind of down by the river's edge. And it had kind of a sandy soil in there. So he went, he's like, this is a good place. I like this place. So he went and he flattened that foundation, made sure it was nice and level. Went and got his materials, walked them over, and he starts setting the walls of his house into that foundation. Well, sometime later, a storm came up. The winds began to come down. I mean, they were just like pouring down in sheets. And the wind kicked up. And it started pushing that rain against that building. It was just pelting it. And as that wind was howling and picking up strength, it was churning the waters in that river and it was pushing it inward until it reached that man's house. And the water began to seep underneath his house and the sand began to pull away and wash out from under that house. What happens when that goes? What happens when water gets under sand and it starts pulling it out. Think about... It falls down. It falls down, a right? Could cause what? A sinkhole. There you go. You guys are so great. I'm so glad you came today. That is right. It created this hole. And so as that hole grew bigger and bigger, the walls crashed in. So Jesus explained... I mean, the people, they were so amazed about what they had heard, that Jesus spoke with such authority. It wasn't like those Pharisees, you know, the teacher of the law, who listened to what God said. In fact, they would get their scrolls, and I memorized everything they said, and they could repeat it back to anyone. 
but they did not do what God had asked them to do. They were not obedient to him. And so Jesus explains the story to them. He said, it is a wise man who, fall, who listens to my instructions and follows them. But it is a foolish man who listens but does not pay attention, who does not do what I say. Let's go look at our memory verse. Let's read it together. I am sure of this, that he who started a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. Philippians 1, 6. You know, you guys, have gone through some storms of your own here in the last two months, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You didn't get to finish out your school year with your friends and get to do all those fun activities that you typically get to do. You, didn't, you don't get to go play with them at any moment's notice. You don't get to go to the swimming pool. You know, Jesus' word tells us, God's word tells us, that we will have troubles in our life. But if we stand on God's truth, we can withstand any storm that comes into our lives. Jesus is our rock. And so I wondered, after the people had heard that story of the parable of the wise and foolish builder, how many were willing to live and trust God, knowing that he was their savior, that he was sent for them? He died for our sins. Remember, we've been talking about that all this week. You know, God can't be around sin. There isn't a little sin or a big sin Sin is sin to God, and he can't be around it. And he sent his son, Jesus, to come and die for our sins. And I want you to know Jesus chose to do that for us because he loves us so much that he wanted us to come into a right relationship with Jesus. So what are you willing to do? Are you willing to listen and study words of God and find out who you are in Him? So how do we do that? One of the wisest choices that you will ever make in your life and the most important decision is to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So as we finish up on Vacation Bible School and all the lessons that you have heard this week, all the teachers and your parents hope that you'll go pick up your Bible. These are some wonderful lessons that Jesus has for us, isn't it? They're interesting, they're full of adventure, that he wants you to come and find out who he is and who you are in him. I want to leave you with something. It's not my words, it's God's word. When you are facing storms in your life, I want you to remember what God said who you are, that you are loved. You were created in the image of God by a loving God, that you were chosen None of us are a mistake. We were chosen. I want you to know that you were created for a purpose and that Jesus will always help you find your way no matter what storm you are going through in your life. He is our strong foundation. Let's do our memory verse one more time this week. 
Let's say it together. I am sure of this, that he who started a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. Philippians 1, 6. Good job, guys. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this day. I thank you for the lessons that we have learned this week, that we have learned who you are and, and who we are in you, Father. I thank you for your Son that you sent to us, Father, to die for our sins, knowing that there was nothing that we could do, beg, or earn for our salvation, and that he chose to place all of our sins upon himself so that we could come into a right relationship with you. And as we close out Vacation Bible School, Father, I just lift up each of these children to you. I pray that they will make wise choices in the days to come. And when they're faced with hard times, Father, I pray that you would lead them to other believers that can help them make wise choices and the best decisions for their life. It is in your precious name we pray, amen.